brought to you tonight by the Tom Likas Show. Gentlemen, the marvelous hour ahead. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And things get worse. They get worse. Remember, uh, about a week or two ago, I talked about a department store team. Uh, see, it's one of these department store chains that's regional. And I think most of their locations are in middle-sized or smaller communities called Gottschalks. There's several of them here in California. Only filed for Chapter 11. <laughs> they were in that godforsaken mall up in uh, Santa Maria in Santa Barbara County. And uh, there they go. Zoop. They said because of the credit markets, because they can't borrow money, because they can't extend credit to their their customers, their customers don't have credit to buy anything. Say ya. Now, Chapter 11 doesn't mean they will go out of business necessarily. I guess that's a decision they'll ultimately make. Uh, Chapter 11 means uh, you kind of get a breather, kind of get some time to uh, figure out who you're going to pay and who you're not and how long it's going to take you to pay and whether you're going to go out of business. So, you know, we know that many of these uh, retailers, they file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and continue operating. Some of them eventually go out of business, some don't. So we'll see what happens to Got Chalks. There is a clothing chain. Uh, it, it's not in any malls I happen to go to. But I've heard of it. I think it's a primarily... Uh, Primarily specializes in women's clothing. Called goodies. Well, time's not been so goody over there, and uh, apparently they're biting the dust. You may have heard that uh, even in the state of California, social workers are being told to take days off without pay. <laughs> and the threat to, uh, instead of sending you a tax refund this year, state of California will send you an IOU. You couldn't make this stuff up. And now we see the Gannett Company. This is from the New York Times. Are they still in business? Who knows? The Gannett Company, the nation's largest newspaper publisher, has said that it will force thousands of their employees to take a week off without pay in order to avoid layoffs says here, Gannett, which holds 85 daily newspapers across the United States, including its flagship paper, USA Today, said it could not say exactly how many people would be required to take time off or how much money the company would save. But it said it would require unpaid leave for most of its 31,000 employees in this country. Also on Wednesday, USA Today notified its staff of a one-year pay freeze for all employees. Craig A. Dubow, the chairman, president, and chief executive of Gannett, said most of our U.S. employees, including myself and all other top executives, will be furloughed for the equivalent of one week in the first quarter. We sincerely hope this minimizes the need for any layoffs going forward, he added. Says here the company cannot impose the measure unilaterally on employees covered by a union contract. But Mr. Dubo said Gannett was asking unions to participate voluntarily. Good luck on that. Tara Connell, a company spokeswoman, said about 12% of Gannett's domestic employees were unionized. It then goes on to talk about how uh, the newspapers in Detroit have stopped home delivery of the paper four days a week. You either buy it at a, at a news rack somewhere or you read it online. That's what they tell you. Talk about the bankruptcy filing of the Tribune Company. They are the publishers of that daily pamphlet known as the Los Angeles Times. Getting tinier every day. The amount of content gets tinier as the logo gets bigger. Have you noticed that? The logo on the paper keeps getting bigger. And I think it's just to fill space. So they don't have to pay anybody to write anything. 
It's unbelievable. Talks about warnings from the owners of the Rocky Mountain News and the Seattle Post-Intelligencer that those papers could shut down. And uh, it goes on to give more details. By the way, the Detroit paper, that is uh, only being delivered three days a week, it's also owned by you know, the Detroit Free Press. Oh, we! Ouch! Pain! You see it everywhere. Everybody's talking about money. As people walk by in the street, you hear people talking more than ever about how much things cost. I've been spending an inordinate amount of time walking around. Because there's no other way to do this. You just walk around. Walk around where there are people. Everybody's talking about money. You overhear people talking about how much things cost, how much they are willing to pay for things or not willing to pay for things, what they're not buying, what they are buying. It's pretty bad. <laughs> and... uh you know, I read an article in Business Week, which I'm sure you didn't read, but uh, don't worry, I read it for you. That said that uh, these hard times are showing who all the, the phonies were, the phony experts, the people who supposedly could predict what was going to happen, how many people were wrong. But it has also revealed a small core of people who knew exactly what was going on and what would happen. And uh, that they and their businesses ultimately will thrive because they will be able to buy up a bunch of businesses for pennies on the dollar. Because they've saved their cash, they've hoarded their cash, and they have prepared for this economic downturn. And that really uh, extends to everybody at every level of society, whether you're a big company buying up uh, newspapers going out of business or... Buying up TV stations that uh, some companies are trying to unload. Newspapers. Whether you are an individual who's been looking to buy a house and found one unaffordable for years, but you've got a job and you've got the cash for a down payment. Whether you're looking to buy a new car. Whether you're looking to buy any household goods. Are you kidding me? Have you seen what flat screens are going for? I talked about this uh, about a week ago. I saw one flat screen TV down to 299 bucks for a 52-inch screen. It's nuts. No, it wasn't 1080p. Uh, correct. But for 299 bucks, my God, you could have TV in the bathroom if you so chose. Pretty outrageous. Now, I told you I was canceling my Los Angeles Times subscription, and I have uh, been double-teamed by uh, these people they call specialists who talk to me on the phone and want to remind me of all the, what they call the benefits of the paper, in case I haven't thought about these benefits. Let me just say this. The biggest benefit the newspaper could give me is news. Lots of it. As the paper continues to shrink, there are less reasons to look at it. And as they provide their content for free online, and they provide it for free uh, even on my cell phone, why would I buy the paper? Why would I go through the inconvenience of having the paper stopped and started when I go out of town and come back into town? Why bother? Makes no sense. I've said this on the air before, but I'll say it again. My father worked for a newspaper for 43 years. I have had newspapers around my home as far back as I can remember. I mean as far back as I can remember being a baby. There were newspapers all around me. The idea that a newspaper won't come to my house anymore is, you know, it's quite shocking. And frankly, um, I held out a long time before canceling my papers. A long time. But there's just no good reason to get the papers. There was a uh, story in the Los Angeles Times today. It was a column asking you, uh, first of all, whether you were, uh, whether you paid to read the column or whether you were reading it for free online. 
and then speculating about whether people would be willing to pay a small fee to read articles online. And my answer to that is quite simply, no. You, Whatever you're charging for, I'm going to get it free from somebody else. This is the problem newspapers face. The classified section was killed by Craigslist a long time ago. And the newspapers themselves have put themselves out of business. The newspapers themselves have competed with themselves and cannibalized themselves because they completely misunderstand the nature of the Internet, the ability to exchange digital content freely. Uh, the fact that uh, the newspapers have now been exposed. Uh, one of the comments in this column in the Los Angeles Times today uh, said that uh, one of the reasons people don't want to pay for the content is that the content is available elsewhere on the Internet. Well, guess what? If the Los Angeles Times and other papers like the Los Angeles Times produced original content instead of filling the pages with wire stories like the Associated Press and Reuters and all this other nonsense, if they created proprietary content, there'd be a compelling reason to pay for the content. The reason there's no compelling reason to pay for the content is because when I open the Los Angeles Times and I see a story from the Associated Press, it's usually a story I read on my cell phone two days ago. I realized one day that I had newspapers piling up at my house that had never been opened. They still had the twine tied around them. Well, they were still in the plastic bag. And the reason is because by the time the paper got to my doorstep, I'd read most of it. The newspapers have been cutting budgets for years to increase profitability. And the way they've been doing it is by firing local reporters who write about important stuff like city council meetings and what the mayor is up to and what's going on in the state capitol and stuff like that. For years, they've been thinning out the herd. They've been closing international uh, uh, international locations, uh, offices in places like Paris or Dubai or whatever, uh, so they could just replace all that content with wire stories. So what happened later? When they went on the Internet and they put their newspaper online, guess what? The stories of the Associated Press and Reuters, they're on everybody's website. You can get them free from Yahoo, free from Google. AP itself has a website. Reuters has a website. Why in the world would I pay for the Los Angeles Times when most of the content, which isn't even generated anymore by the people who work at the Los Angeles Times is available at hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of websites. Newspapers killed themselves. They killed themselves. It's a little sad on one hand, because it's what my dad did his whole life. I was uh, at the offices of the newspaper regularly. Spent time at the newspaper. I could still remember what the city room smelled like. In a particular smell, because you were around, uh, you were around the ink, you were around the presses, you were around. Uh, uh, the, the, frankly, uh, every day they had to make a uh, new type for the newspaper. Every day, and uh, this molten composite metal. Every day they had to create the the linotype for the newspaper. Then every day they would have to melt yesterday's linotype so they could make today's. And that smell is in my head as I'm telling you this story, as I'm talking to you about this. But newspapers for years now have been a joke. They've been a joke, and they've gotten lazy. And because newspapers have become big business and big Wall Street companies, uh, uh, they have to adhere to certain Wall Street principles for profitability. And they figured we wouldn't notice if they eliminated their reporter in Paris or their reporter in Milan or their... Uh, reporter at City Hall and re replaced it with the Associated Press. I mean, uh, I'm a big hockey fan. The Los Angeles Times does not send a reporter with the Los Angeles Kings when they go on the road. They take the uh, story from the Associated Press in whatever city the uh, Kings appeared. Well, why would I pay to see that? I go to Yahoo Sports. Sports.yahoo.com. I can read the same story. Why do I need the Los Angeles Times or any newspaper? 
Just some random thoughts. Let's get your reaction to these. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Less commercials, shorter commercial breaks. We take the phone calls faster. With more energy. It's outrageous. Even you have a chance to get in. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thank you uh, for the call. Hey, uh, you made a couple of really good comments your first segment. Uh, I want to mention something when you talked about the sports. I'm fortunate enough to actually host a syndicated sports talk show as well. I take a lot of calls with this. And what I've noticed, you said the Kings don't send a beat writer or the papers don't out with the Kings anymore. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll have a sit-down where the, where the writer will call and do a phone interview with the coach after every game like he's there just getting quotes. But it's, it's really a placebo. It's an empty shell of what really went on at the game because anyone who's been around and covered sports knows that the best things at the games are what happens during the timeouts, what happens in the pregame, the postgame. Well, well, well plus, the- plus uh, let's face it, uh, depending on the team, the coach has a vested interest in, in what he's saying. And yeah, you run into the guys at the hotel, you fly on the plane with them. That's where the real good stories come up once you get to know these guys. And the other thing, too, with the whole newspaper business, I know it, it's not as easy as it sounds, but have, they, have the companies gone too far? What if these companies were to say, you know what, the L.A. Times, the New York Times, it's no longer free on the Internet. I'm going to force you to buy a paper if you want it. Take our content down. I mean, well, uh, A number, of, a number of papers have tried that. In fact, the Los Angeles Times uh, used to have it th- so that you could only see a small part of the website, and then if you wanted to see the rest, you had to pay. And uh, according to what I read, people just said, fine, we'll just get the information somewhere else. Because, for example, the L.A. Daily News was not charging. The Orange County Register was not charging. Uh, The the fact is that they would all have to agree to do it at the same time. And and then they'd be accused of collusion or whatever. Collusion and antitrust, right. So so, uh, the the problem is, if one of them does it, the others have to do it at the same time. And that's not going to happen. And it's unfortunate. I mean, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind paying. I like getting the paper the old school way. Of course, with the way you prep with your show, the way I prep with mine, I have to be online in Miami in seconds because we're heard in that market. So I understand that for for guys like us, but but we're not the the regular type of guy that that's as fortunate as, as what you and I do. We you know have to be able to talk and hit all those different markets. Other people can can be fine with gra- with grabbing their paper and reading it when they're in a the can at work. Right, but but even the, now, what's happening is, you know what I read in the can? My BlackBerry. Yeah, why not? I, I, can, I, read re- I can read. I read the yellow pages half the time. Just I, get me going. I can read the top stories out of the L.A. Times from every section on my cell phone. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah, would I pay for this? I, I, don't, I don't, I don't blame you. I just wish that. Honestly, sometimes I wish that as great as the tools the internet is, it's caused just as much disruption and havoc in this world. And I honestly wish it wasn't around because, right, I think that's the single most piece of technology that's really just turned everything on its ear. Well, I think ultimately what will happen is there'll be a new paradigm. There will be uh, a new way of doing this, uh, <laughs> and uh, there'll be a new way of uh, monetizing content. Yeah, we, they I just haven't figure- figured out what it is yet. Yeah, we, we, we will soon enough. Tom. I mean, hey, I mean you as so you much. know, as you know, by the way, if you're beat as sports, as you know, at the beginning, Major League Baseball was opposed to televising games. Right. Because they said it would hurt attendance. And here in Los Angeles, uh, until 20 years ago, the L.A. Uh, Dodgers only had nine games a year on television. Well, same thing. The Cubs, the Cubs used to only play day games because, you know, I mean, they wanted to be traditionalists there and they realized that attendance was getting hurt. There was a point in time where they were still were not selling out every single day game at Wrigley. The travel, the schedules, everything became too hectic. They wanted to include more of the working man. And once the prices started to go up, that's the main reason they put lights in. Once the prices start to go up, you price the average person, the average Joe that used to be able to go to a day game. Now the tickets are more expensive at night than they are during the day so therefore the guys have to stay and work longer more games are at night at wrigley field a lot of that gets lost in translation thank you so much for the call rob it's 1-800-5800-TOM richard on the tom like show hello hi tom how are you doing this is richard calling from irvine yes sir 
Hey, I got two comments. One about the newspapers. I totally agree with you and about your your dad working in the plan. That let's face it, the newspapers are a dying dinosaur. They're going to be extinct. And, and like you say, I can get the you know top news stories on my cell phone in a matter of seconds in real time, versus waiting till tomorrow morning and maybe getting only a partial story. Well, I, I, you know, again, I, I think uh, the Los Angeles Times is not unlike the San Francisco Chronicle and other newspapers that for years, in order to be more profitable, have just been tearing the heart out of the city room of the paper. Exactly. And now now that you've got the Internet, uh, you've got all of these uh, uh, newspapers crying that people won't pay to read their papers online. Well, guess what? If your paper wasn't just a bunch of wire stories, a bunch of uh, op-ed pieces written for other newspapers or columns written for other newspapers or Dear Abby or whatever you're filling space with, you wouldn't have this problem. Right. If they put real content that we really wanted to, to, to read or absorb, I'd be happy to pay for it and continue with my subscription. But I canceled mine about four years ago. Yeah. And uh, you're one of many because the L.A. Times, when I came to Los Angeles over 20 years ago, had over 2 million readers, and it's now down below 900,000. That's unbelievable. That's a big drop. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's it going? I'm doing okay, son. Hey, I live in Riverside, and we have the Press Enterprise. And it's a, it's a decent newspaper, and not much of something to purchase. So that's why I go on their website. It's all free. You just register your login. Uh, you, email address, you, and you can get in and see everything free. Every single time I go to the Theater Brothers by my house, it's the same sales rep from the PE, or the Press Enterprise, and he's always hounding me, and, I'm, and I, I asked him this last time, why would I pay for it when it's free online? And he came out, and I couldn't believe that you said this. He's also, you can put food on my table. Well, uh, I think that's the bottom line here. I think uh, the newspapers have put a dagger in their own heart. It's sad, but true. You want to know what I told them? What? I said, you know what? You might want to get into another business because you're not going to have much on your plate here to come. Oh, if I hear from the specialist at the L.A. Times again telling me all the benefits of the paper. By the way, one of the benefits of the paper was, uh, what was the benefit? The coupons. Yeah. Which which you can also get free by going to smartsource.com. You don't need to get the paper to get those either. Exactly. <laughs> but I couldn't believe the audacity of what you said. I was just shocked. And, you know, I just thought I'd, I'd let they're you know really, they're really They're still arrogant. As the business is burning down, they're still arrogant about it. Exactly. Hey, can you take me out of IE style? What style? IE style. I don't know what that is. Oh, are you talking about the Inland Empire? The Inland Empire. What would that be? I didn't know if you meant IE Inland Empire. IE. 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 <laughs> Big bong rip, buddy. Thank you, Tom. I mean, what are you going to. What does crystal meth sound like? How do you put that on the air? Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yo, Tom. Great crystal meth joke, by the way. <laughs> Uh, Tom, I'm calling, uh, I recently just got laid off, uh, from a paper in the, uh, in and around the LA area. And basically, it's having, it's having good and bad side effects. The good side effect is that readership is dropping, but we're also saving a crap load of paper. Hundreds of thousands of trees are being saved because no one's reading the paper. The bad side is that, just like you were saying, local news is not being reported. And it's trickling down that people just don't care anymore about what's going on, you know, 10 miles away from their house. And it trickles down to the parents, then to the kids. Maybe, like, uh, the kids can't even tell you who the, who the mayor of L.A. is or that, you know, their school might be closing because uh, the state can't pay the paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I know it's true. It is true. And so it's just a sad thing that the more, the less news we have, the more times people turn to news that's not news, like celebrity journalism, which should not be called journalism at all, because it's not adding to anything. Well, I think that's society. changing. By the way, this is uh, relates to something else we talked about recently. I think that's changing, too. I think that fascination with Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan, uh, 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 what's her name? Um, Britney Spears? Britney Spears. Yeah. All of those. Richie, Nicole Richie. Remember them? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Already I'm forgetting their names. I mean, I really do believe that as, as people's concerns turn to whether they're going to have a job to go to tomorrow... Yeah. I think the whole celebrity journalism thing. I mean, the TMZ, it just looks like so yesterday. Tom 
like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. It's the Tom Like It like Show. It show. It's the Tom Like It Show. Now you hear us six days a week, Monday through Friday, from 3 until 8 p.m. Pacific time as you head home. Saturdays, 2 until 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk and MobyUpTom.com. That's right. And if you add in Sunday, the tasting room with Tom Like is 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific time. You can hear it online. You can hear it on the air at 97.1 FM Talk. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. And uh, now connect the publishers of USA Today, the Detroit Free Press, a bunch of newspapers. Furloughing workers for one week during the first quarter of the year without pay. And uh, the newspaper business continues to... Uh, Swirl around the bowl. Finally, it's going to go <coughs> right down. Done. Over. Sean on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Good. As an employee of, let's say, uh, one of the major newspapers in Los Angeles area, uh, we've definitely seen a decline in terms of content and us cannibalizing off uh, writers to who can report on local stories. And the reason being is because the advertising dollars aren't there. And it's the same reason as to why you have shorter commercial breaks. The av- advertising dollars aren't there because the economy's bad and people can't afford to spend as well, much money. Well, unlike, unlike a newspaper, a radio station has to put out 24 hours a day of content. We can't, right. uh, we can't, uh, we don't sign off at midnight or sign off at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. We continue providing all the content. The newspaper, on the other hand, has not reduced the price of the newspaper. What they've done instead is simply reduce the content and figured nobody would notice. Well, then re- the reason as to why they had to reduce the content and cannibalize off you know, excellent staff writers uh, is because no one's picking up the newspaper because they're streaming it online. Whose fault is that? Whose well, fault well, is that? It's it's certainly not the newspaper's fault. Of course it is. The newspaper gave the content away for free. You'd be a fool to pay for it. Well, exactly. But I mean, that's that's the modern age of these days. Well, don't that, but the point is, who are you blaming? The reader? Pick up the paper anymore. People don't pick up the paper, but they but they they now this week it uh, was uh, announced that uh, especially people under thirty five get their news from the internet and television. Number one and two, newspapers right. are a distant third. Yeah, exactly. And that's the reason as to why they can't keep their writers. They have to cut back and lay off all these people. But, that but, are but you see, in my you company. see, but it's one of these businesses that's going to cut itself into uh, uh, the, being a, a thing of the past. Well, you, you can't cut your way. To, you can't, can't cut your way to prosperity. Well, it, absolutely, because they can't figure out a way to compete with themselves. They in are terms eventually of competing versus their print. They the are going now, away. Print used to support online. Now online supports print. That's pretty much going down the toilet. And online really doesn't support print because yeah, well, because they can't make any money off of it. Right. So. The advertising yeah. dollars from online uh, uh, content uh, are minimal for newspapers. Right. I'm sure in your, even in your business, uh, your advertising dollars online that you guys stream people online to listen to your broadcasts online don't nearly make as much as money as the advertising dollars you get from your radio show. Uh, that's certainly true, but here's the difference, uh, uh-huh. okay, and that is this. Uh, first of all, our online stream does have advertising, yes. uh, just like the radio right. show. <laughs> well, whatever it is. I mean, it also has recorded commercials uh, uh-huh. on there. Uh, and the other thing about it is that, uh, once again, although advertising has been cut across the board in a number of industries, um, newspapers are the only ones that have dramatically cut the quality of their content and the amount of their content. Mm-hmm. A- absolutely. And, and it's because they don't have quality writers in anymore and they have to pick up their stories. But you understand, you understand that this started, uh-huh. and I, I see your age is 31. Uh, my yeah. dad worked at the New York Post before and after Rupert Murdoch. Uh-huh. He was there for 43 years. I'm very right. familiar with what a newspaper is uh-huh. all about. 
Right. This started a long time ago, and it started when newspapers stopped being owned by individuals like Catherine Graham, who owned the Washington Post, and uh, the Salzberger family owned the New York Times, and they became publicly traded companies. Right. And in order to make newspapers more profitable, they realized that there were certain uh, reporters they could get rid of and replace the content with content from the Associated Press, uh, United Press International, Reuters, and other wire services. Bloomberg. And so what has happened in newspapers is that over the years, less and less of the content has been proprietary, and the newspapers continue raking it in. They were making yeah, record profits. Yeah, sell to the Tribune, and then Tribune sells it to Zell, and now Zell's trying to sell off everything in the world. Well, that the, he could possibly sell off. Well, <laughs> there you go. And, and, uh, but and, what, and, in and, the and process... And what suffers is the paper. Absolutely well, agree with you. But... No, you know, you you can't capture your community uh, online uh, um, compared to, comparatively. I speaking, don't agree with that. Is. I don't agree with that at all. The Los Angeles Times doesn't have any community content online that isn't in the newspaper. You know, if the Los Angeles Times had reporters at the city halls in the most important cities in Southern California, there'd be a compelling reason to read that content. Right. But it isn't there. No, I I agree. I agree. It's just it's 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 a sign of the times, and and then the newspaper's a, di a dinosaur that's dying off. It's yeah. going to become extinct. No doubt about it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Tony on the Tom Likas show. Hey, how you doing, Dad? Doing great, son. Good to talk to you, Dad. Dad today, especially uh, I, I like the topic because uh, this past Monday before I got to work, uh, I thought about buying the paper as I usually do on a Monday morning. Um, you know, I teach for a living. I like to have a homeroom. I talk about current events. I put in my two quarters into the L.A. Times uh, vending machine. And uh, I opened, tried to open the door, and it didn't work. So I started shaking the hell out of the door. My, my chains fell out. And I was like, what's going on? Then I looked closer, and it said 75 cents for Monday's newspaper. 75 cents? 75 cents. Um, for the newspaper, the LA Times, in Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Dad, I was pissed because I didn't want to put another 25 cents in there. I'll buy the paper twice a week, and I'll, and I'll steal the paper maybe once. But now, Tom... When I buy the paper, I'm taking two, because I'm pissed, man. 75 cents, it's ridiculous. You are right, Tom. The newspaper business is going down the tubes. I'm outraged. I don't know what to say. Uh, I, don't, I guess I'm going to have to do current events a different way. No more photocopying the articles and whatever from my classroom. Um, so, Tom, can you do me a favor and take me out with a bong rip and a, and a Al Abdul? I, well, I can take you out with a bong hip for sure. <coughs> Come on, Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. And uh, newspapers continue to uh, disappear. Missy on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom? Yes. Okay, um, I disagree with you somewhat. I mean, the newspaper, first of all, it does cost too much. I know because I'm still paying for it. Um, but I think it's going to linger, and this is why I think it's going to hang around. Um like the baby boomer people who are... Uh, because retired. homeless people need something as a blanket? No. No, Tom. Because people who own parakeets need to line the bird cage? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> when you pack, you know, when you're moving... Because you the Brits pack. need to wrap their fish and chips in something? Because everybody doesn't sit around a computer all day and read. You don't have to sit on the computer. I, as I've been saying, I used to take a newspaper to the crapper. Yeah. Now well. I take my Blackberry. Well, that's kind of gross, but whatever. What do you mean it's gross? 
<laughs> no. You, what do you, what do, you do? Do you leave your phone? Uh, wait no. a minute. When you go to the bathroom, do you leave the phone outside the bathroom? No, you I don't. don't. Take the phone in there with me. No, just I go. I well, do it start doing it. You could save yourself. You could save yourself a couple of hundred bucks a year. What? Because you can read the paper on there. I can read the paper. The men in my house need it. When I canceled it, they flipped out because they didn't couldn't have the sports page. Okay. And my younger son, he's 23, he does not go on the computer to read the newspaper. He gets on MySpace, and that's about it. Well, he but he's not, man. he's not, you know what, though? He's not in the majority. That's why newspapers are dying. Nah, they're going to be around. In fact, I think the main reason newspapers are still here hanging on at all is because you have so many old people yes. uh, who grew up with it. I agree with that. And definitely. and now, uh, <laughs> as they die off, there's going to be less and less people subscribing. That's true. I agree with that. That's for sure. I mean, didn't <laughs> you see the story this week? The story no, I don't about read the people paper. under thirty five. <laughs> people under thirty five are getting their news number one from the internet, and number two, uh, uh, they're getting it from television. Newspapers weren't in the top two. Well, yeah, I agree with that. I do, but I still think. Well, then, then, then ultimately, true. demographically, what, how can you, <laughs> how can you concede anything else? I don't know. I'm just telling you from my experience, man. I canceled it. I figured they watch ESPN, you know, they're on the computer, but no, they have. Well, but you, but again, computer. darling, 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 <laughs> uh, darling, we, we're talking about millions and millions of people. We're not talking about the guys who live at your house. Okay, well, yeah, but it's still around, and there's still some people that are needing it. But there are. Not, but the point is, the newspaper needs hundreds of thousands of people to need it. Uh, not not the couple of guys who live at your that. house and a few old people who can't even get out to the driveway to pick it up. That's true, yeah. They, they, they need more uh, younger and more enthusiastic uh, readers, and they're not going to get them. So when your Internet's down, then, you know, you got to know what's going on How, for some reason. Darling, I, I don't know, I I don't know what farm, I don't know what farm community you live in, but how often is your Internet down these days? I mean, didn't that go out with AOL and dial-up modems? I mean, whose Internet is out? On the cable, Come on! All of a sudden, they go out, so I don't know. I, you know, my cable, uh, when I had cable, it went out more than my Internet goes out. Come on! No, I don't know. Sometimes well, you don't, you know, you oh don't have Oh, my. I can't take it anymore. She's driving me insane. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. David on the Tom Like his Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Hey, I wanted to comment about, you were talking about earlier in the show about the people congregating and they're always talking about money or, you know, who's losing their job or whatever. Uh, my own personal experience, the last maybe last three months, I'll be at Starbucks, Del Taco, McDonald's, and there'll be like eight or ten people in line. And some of the people will be holding some paperwork, and then I can, you know, kind of watching, what, observing what's going on. And four or five people are either turning an application for employment or asking for an application for employment. And other four or five people in the line are either having coupons or two for ones, or you know, buy one get one free. Um, or they're talking about their neighbor lost their job, their their cousins losing their home. Um, and by the way, how many people at Starbucks have those Starbucks cards? And they got a uh, hundred dollars worth of them for eighty bucks at Costco. Yeah, that's, a, that's probably the uh, fairly you know good deal that's going around. If you have to go to Starbucks, <laughs> I don't. I have a I have a cappuccino machine. I was uh, off at Starbucks the other day. I was I put my fifty cents on there for the LA Times, and then I'm walking out. The, the lady, the barista, is going, "Hey, sir! Hey, sir! Hey, sir!" I thought they were talking to somebody else, and I turn around and they go, "It's uh, you owe us another quarter." I go, "For what?" They go, "The paper seventy five cents." <laughs> go get out of town. Did you laugh your ass off? No, I, what I did, I go, no, no, it isn't. I started arguing with them. They go, read the papers. There's a little tiny, in the little corners, the 75 cents. I go, when the hell did this go up? And they said, uh, they didn't know. And they said, give us a quarter, give us back the paper. I said, you know what? For 75 cents, it ain't worth it. I give, I put that through the paper back on the, on the counter. I'll bet a lot of people are doing that. <laughs> By the way, the whole paper is available for free online. Why would you pay 75 cents for it? It's not worth it. It's a complete, complete joke, and now it's like a little pamphlet, you know? When I was a kid growing up, it was like two inches thick, thick, you know? And now it's like a little pamphlet, like it's a little TV guide. It's really a joke. And there were days when I look at the sports section, and it's like six pages. Yeah. <laughs> I get this. Oh, and the content isn't even, it always is from AP or from some wire service on routers. Right. And uh, it's not even their own staff writers, like in the, in the old, good old days when they had their own good editorial staff. Uh, yeah, well, they, how many people have they let go? My God, you want to read J.A. Adonde's column? It's on ESPN.com. You don't have to get the L.A. Times. He's, he, he, he was given, I guess, a buyout package. He's gone.
Oh, really? I can get that information out on my cell phone. I don't even have to get the time. That's what I'm saying. I totally, can you take me out with the airplane crash? Uh, well, yes. Yes, I, I think we've got a couple of different airplane crashes there. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Thomas on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. How are you doing, sir? Doing great. Excellent. Love the show. Thank you. Um, I believe that print media will be a big part of our lives for at least the next twenty five years. Well, there will be print media, but the ones that are uh, going to be uh, more successful. Uh, and, and are less likely to go out of business are, are ones like the Wall Street Journal that have some specific niche or some specific focus. Absolutely. Big, I... big, bland newspapers like the Los Angeles Times, which don't even have a lot of proprietary content anymore. Absolutely. Uh, they, they, they are dodo birds. They are going away. Yeah, I, I believe that the, I believe that the advent of the internet and as advanced as our communication systems are now, that media will have to subscribe to a much more focused individual rather than what you're talking about, the, the broad spectrum, uh, the broad spectrum readership. Um, example, I'm, <laughs> it's funny that you raise this topic because I'm in the process of launching my own piece of print media. And in doing some research, I found that last year, 248 new magazines were launched, and these were launched and focused towards women's groups, children, gambling, gaming. Yeah, I, I believe that print media will be a part of our lives, but you know, if, if your argument is that broad spectrum newspapers will go away, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there'll, there'll always be something in print, like there'll always be radio, there'll always be television, but it's going to have to change. It can, can't stay the way it is. And it's going to need to be, you know, single guys, age 25 to 30. Here's oh, by the way, who reads Time Magazine anymore or Newsweek? National Geographic. I mean... Even National Geographic is a niche, but Time Magazine? That's like a magazine reviewing all the stuff you've read on the Internet for the past seven days. It's unbelievable. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.